Here was Spiro. same power 
to do something this big as to vaccinate every child on the planet multiple times until the disease is gone. Nor did WHO think that we could mobilize communities around the world to participate in immunization programs. But Rotarians were persistent. They used as many of their connections as they could. And I suspect that involved a fair amount of whining and dining. <coughs> but in 85, Rotary was given special designation as an NGO affiliated with the WHO. And so the rest is history. Nine days ago, I participated in national immunization to keep India polio free. I was one of 2.3 million people out in the field that day, across India. 2.3 million vaccinators. Just the one day. The number of children aged five and under who were immunized that day was a staggering 170 million. Half the population of the United States. Imagine the organization and the logistics involved with the effort of that magnitude. That, I would say, is the power of connections and our influence as community leaders. In addition to the one day I spent on polio immunization, I had the opportunity to visit six cities and meet clubs, spend time with Rotarians, and visit the projects that they were running. That was the most enlightening part of my whole trip. I was there 15 days. I had some foreknowledge of what to expect. But let me tell you, nothing prepares one for the experience of being there in person. I met physically and mentally challenged students at a special school run 100% nuts to bolts by one Rotary Club of 75 members. The building was rented, paid for by Rotarians, special debt teachers for 90 students. The children were bused from home to school on a Rotary bus, given breakfast and lunch, and all kinds of facilities at the school. Just one Rotary Club, making life-changing impact. And when some of the students at the age of 17 graduated, the Rotarians would find them jobs. <coughs> In fact, my host family had employed one of the students at the restaurant that they run. So they, they, they take it all the way. I spent time visiting the Tagore Hospital in Calcutta after visiting Mother Teresa. But I saw children being operated on, undergoing ca cardiac surgery in huge operating theaters. They do things on a big scale. 47 surgeries a day, heart surgeries. They do other surgeries too. And then I looked through the ICU where there were rows and rows of beds with all these infants and young children, most of them under five. And there wasn't a squeak because they were all unconscious with tubes going in and out. They were in recovery mode. You know, in Calcutta alone, Rotarians there have so far funded 5,000 heart surgeries. Okay. It's a scale that we do not see here. I went to the city of Jaipur to visit the limb clinic where they make custom made limbs for people who have lost a limb either through accident or whatever. This is one, this is the largest of seven such centers throughout the country and the scale and the design in, 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 innovation that is happening there is amazing. They are working on a foot that has a, a leg that has a flexible foot and it's all done as a result of collaboration between the parents in Britain and in India. And the British have a special foundation to fund this. The largest center in Jaipur that I visited can handle 200 patients at a time. In three to five days, they've got a limb that is perfectly customized. Even the skin color is matched, made on site. And they're walking. I saw one running. Okay. They're not only innovating, but they're changing the lives of those people. And the patients get housed, all 200 of them, for free, get fed for free, they pay a token one rupee, there are 60 rupees in a dollar. Okay. All funded by Rotarians. 
and other philanthropic organizations. And then I saw hospitals, I went to two of those, where they're doing thousands of corrective surgery. You know, they, they correct the hip, the knee, the ankle for polio victims. And I went to a hospital in New Delhi, St. Stephen's, where they're doing such life-changing corrective surgeries. And I visited the men's and the women's wards. And I tell you, it's heartbreaking to listen to their stories, but there's phenomenal hope for them. I saw people in their 20s who had been victims of polio at the age of two, three, and had been crawling on the ground since then, who were now anticipating, some of them have already had the surgery, of being able to stand up and face, face the rest of their human beings, look them in the eye. That is humanity in action that's happening out there. Last Monday, the 100th and 10th anniversary, I spent in a different town, and I spent it with the Rotarians of the Bakaro Couples Club in Eastern India. The meeting, I'll go to the meeting in the evening, but I spent the whole day with them. The meetings in the evening started at 8 p.m., finished at 9, and then they started celebrating Brody's birthday. When I left at 1 a.m. in the morning with my host family, they were still going strong. Okay. I, I had spent the whole day with members of this club. It's a relatively small club. Talking about the six projects that they had done in the last year. And I had attended the opening ceremony. Well, the center was already open, but there was a special ceremony for visitors and so on. Of a vocational training center for underprivileged women, women who otherwise had no means to make a living. The Rotarians had used their connections to get a local organization to give them a two-story building, large building, to be the vocational training center. And they had filled up one bathroom with sewing machines, so the sewing machine school was open, and when the women learned the, the trade on graduation, they received a free sewing machine to take home and start earning a living. And the plan was that the next school was going to be a beautician school and the one after that a computer school. Most of it was funded by local vegetarians. Uh, the initial startup for the sewing school uh, involved funding, additional funding from a club, Rotary Club in Denmark. But here was a club with a marvelous example of how to change the lives of others. They were acting as change agents, focusing on reducing poverty and strengthening the social and economic fabric of their community. And I forgot to tell you, this club has only been chartered eight months. Not eight years, eight months. It's a couples club. Only married couples can join. That means the whole family is committed. And on the day the club got chartered, all 26 became Paul Harris Fellows. Not with points, with real cash to the foundation. And that is their intent. There will always be a couple of clubs, and there will always be a 100% Paul Harris Fellow Club. My point in telling you all this thing is that Rotarians in other parts of the world, especially in places like India, are not only driven, but they're dedicated to the ideals of service and committed to reducing poverty, growing <coughs> health, supporting education, and so on, whatever the issues of the day are in their world. And I tell you, their compassion and generosity knows no bounds. They don't always rely on foundation grants or money from overseas. They get on with the business of doing. I think Paul Harris would be very proud of how they're practicing the service of himself. After two weeks in India, and as you can tell, I am hugely impressed with what I've seen, massively inspired. <coughs> I also came home with an odd sensation in my stomach, but that's punishment for all that good food. <laughs> but I'd like to digress for a moment and talk about how the rest of the world sees us. I've been to several events in my current role with the Foundation where non-Rotarians have talked about the contributions of Rotarians in their countries and regions. But I will mention one event that I went to last year, which was at the official residence of the 
uh, Swedish ambassador to the United States in DC, Washington. The reason for the reception was that the Swedish government wanted to honor and thank Rotary for what Rotarians have done around the world. I mean, the Swedes are very big on philanthropy, and they put us as a leader in, the, in that field. The ambassador talked about our leadership in the polio effort, and Sweden has given quite a few hundred billion towards the cause. He mentioned the Rotary Peace Centers, one of which is in Uppsala University in Sweden, and the others in Australia, Japan, Thailand, Britain, and the United States. And the good that they were doing in terms of training young people to be future peacemakers. He also credited Rotary for being the leading civil society driver of change, using his words. So others recognize that we are good change agents. And the fact that we had accelerated societal reform by supporting education, health, health initiatives, creating opportunities for jobs through vocational training and college scholarships and so on. He saw Rotary as a vital component of the social fabric of all the countries that we live in and serve. You see, the world appreciates us far more than we realize because we have a strong grassroots foundation. We are connected, not only locally, but with state and federal and national level governments and other institutions around the world. And we get things done. That evening, I also learned that the ambassador's wife had studied for her master's degree at the London School of Economics on an ambassadorial scholarship from the Rotary Club of Gothenburg, Sweden. Small world. We have greater impact than we realize. We touch more people than we realize. The more I see of what Rotarians and others are doing around the world, other like-minded people just like Rotarians are doing great things, the more I'm convinced that we're on the right track. The greatest progress is being made in countries, at least the ones that I've been to, where people take ownership for fixing their own social economic problems. Not the ones who stand there with handouts and we send them money or do things. The ones who are standing up at the rotary level and saying we want to change our society are making the fastest and the most progress. No matter how challenging the goals or how long it takes to get there. Let me take you to India for a moment, once again. Early last month, 160 senior Rotarians, Indian Rotarians, met in the city of Pune to develop plans for a mega initiative to take education to the next level throughout India. This is going to be bigger than polio. and take many, many more years. That's a multi, multi-billion dollar effort. It will be an enormous nationwide project and Rotary will provide the leadership and the advocacy to bring on board all relevant actors including government at all levels, corporations, software companies, anybody involved in education as well as institutions from outside the country who might be able to help. The endeavor will cover teacher support, e-learning, adult literacy, child development and what they call happy schools. T-E-A-C-H, the H is for happy schools. And I asked them, I said, what does that mean? And they said, a happy school is one that has good facilities, it's clean, it has toilets for boys and girls, separate ones, clean ones, safe water, libraries, uniforms and footwear, sports facilities, benches and desks for everyone. They're aiming for the best, plus e-learning capabilities. Here is another project which will succeed because it relies on massive collaboration, it relies on Rotarians using their connections at all levels in the country, and it, when it relies on bringing and creating public-private partnerships. That's the scale that we should be thinking of. And the reason I'm mentioning that is that we, if we are truly agents of change, we need to think big and make all decisions for the future of our own communities, our own region, and our own country. And I'm talking of the United States. Our challenges may pale in comparison to the scale of what, what others face, but we do not live in a perfect society. 
we too have our own demons to slay, such as substance abuse, urban violence, areas of extreme unemployment and poverty, obesity, and poor health, low rates of graduation, which are appalling in many states, and many more that you can think of. Such issues may not impact us personally, but service of ourselves is not about us. It is about others who, for whatever reason, need our help because they are unable to help themselves. We have an, a great opportunity to improve the state of our society, our country, by using our connections and, and our ability to mobilize communities into action. But we can only do so if we accept our responsibility as change agents. Let me finish by highlighting the key points of the message that I'm really trying to communicate. <coughs> One, Rotary is alive and well throughout the world, or perhaps more alive in some places than others. But it is out there. People are doing great things. As you know, more than two-thirds of more than two-thirds of Rotarians are outside North America, and Rotary is growing in all those parts. Secondly, Rotarians are excellent change agents and capable of great achievement in service to others. All over the world, Rotarians are using the connections to improve the human condition and making their own communities self-reliant self and more resilient. Three, we must become active players in shaping our own societies. <clears throat> we don't have to do it all, but we must lead in creating public-private partnerships to solve the major problems in our own, own country. Four, the world appreciates and applauds the scope and the scale of responsibility that Rotarians have accepted as leaders and change and agents of positive change. And finally, we should be very proud of who we are and what we represent. Rotarians continue to be united worldwide through our connections, and they're working for the common good on some of the world's most pressing problems. In doing so, we transcend boundaries and create understanding in a multifaceted world. Thank you for listening.